North Korea, a country veiled in secrecy and isolation. For decades, countless individuals have risked their lives to escape this oppressive regime. Some of these individuals have successfully escaped, while others were unlucky and were caught in the process. Today we bring you seven most incredible escapes from North Korea. Number seven. A soldier escapes while being fired at by his fellow soldiers at the demilitarized zone. This happened in November 2017 to Oh Chong Song, son of a North Korean major general. Unlike most North Korean defectors who take time to plan for their escape, Song had no intention to flee North Korea when he woke up that morning. It all started when Song got into trouble with his friends, and to get his mind out of the incident, he decided to go and get a couple of drinks at a bar. After having fun, Song got into his green jeep and started driving back to his military base. As he got closer to the military base, Song was supposed to stop at a checkpoint, but he smashed through it instead. That is when he realized he was in trouble. Song knew he could be severely punished or imprisoned for such a violation. Therefore, the only thing that made sense to him at that point was to speed off and cross the border to South Korea. Immediately, his fellow military officers got into their military vehicles and the race for survival began. Song was driving at a very high speed. His escape bid crunched to a halt yards from the border as his jeep became stuck in a ditch. With North Korean soldiers almost upon him, he climbed out of the car and started running towards the border that was just yards away. This footage shows Song running between two trees as several North Korean soldiers scramble to take up positions behind him and open fire. The hail of bullets tore through Song, at least five shots hitting him directly. Luckily, he made it through the border and was dragged to safety by South Korean soldiers while unconscious. He was airlifted to hospital and his life was saved. After his recovery, Song in an interview said he does not regret fleeing North Korea. He also said that he does not blame his former colleagues for shooting him five times while escaping, insisting that if they had failed to shoot him, they would have been severely punished. Number 6. No Kum Sok This was one of the most incredible escapes during the Korean War. No Kum Sok was a North Korean-born American engineer and aviator who served as a senior lieutenant in the Korean People's Army Air Force. During the Korean War, no applied to join the Korean People's Army Air Force and was accepted after he lied in the selection test. His history professor helped him in the pilot selection test. After passing the selection test, No was taken to Manchuria for flight training. He subsequently received a promotion to the rank of lieutenant and then to senior lieutenant. He flew more than 100 combat missions during the war. On the morning of September 21, 1953, No flew his MiG-15 from Sunan, just outside Pyongyang, to Kimpo Air Base in South Korea. The time from takeoff in North Korea to landing in South Korea was 17 minutes, with the MiG-15 reaching up to 1,000 kilometers per hour. During the flight, he was not chased by North Korean aircraft, as he was too far away. Luckily, he was not intercepted by American air or ground forces. U.S. radar near Kimpo Air Base had been shut down temporarily that morning for routine maintenance. No landed the wrong way on the runway, almost hitting an F-86 Sabre jet landing at the same time from the opposite direction. If No had tried to land in the right direction, he would have been spotted and shot down. No taxied the MiG into a free parking spot between two Sabre jets, got out of the plane and began tearing up a picture of Kim Il-sung that was placed in the cockpits of North Korean aircraft, and then threw up his arms in surrender at approaching airbase security guards. After being taken into custody and debriefed by CIA operatives, No received a $100,000 reward. Nevertheless, there were repercussions for No's defection. According to Captain Lee Eun-yong, a Korean People's Army Air Force flight instructor who defected to South Korea two years after No, five of No's Air Force comrades and commanders were executed. One of those killed was Lieutenant Kun Su-sung, No's best friend and fellow pilot. 
Noh's parents would have also been punished for their son's defection. But his father was already dead, and his mother had already defected to the south. The fate of Noh's uncle and the rest of his family remains unknown. In 1954, Noh Kumsok immigrated to the United States and was later reunited with his mother in 1957. He subsequently graduated from the University of Delaware with degrees in mechanical and electrical engineering. No got married and was blessed with two kids, a son and a daughter. No died in December 2022 at the age of 90. No's MiG-15 is currently on display at the National Museum of the United States Air Force. Number 5. Song Byok Byok was the official state propaganda artist in North Korea in the 1990s. Byok's escape story is both saddening and also motivating. His escape happened during the North Korean famine. On his first escape attempt, Byok and his father had no plans to escape North Korea, but to simply cross over to China through the Tumen River and find some food. They were from a town further inland, and they were not sure where the river was high and where it was low, but they were determined to cross it anyway. As they began their journey, Bayok took off his clothes and tied them into a rope to hold them together, and he told his father not to let go. As they approached the middle of the river, the strap felt lighter. And when he looked back, he saw his father drifting away. Bayok was so devastated. His father was going under the water and he couldn't get him out. Bayok rushed up to the North Korean border guards and asked them to save his father. But instead, they handcuffed him and took him away. He was tortured and then jailed for four months in the Chongjin prison camp. After he was released from the camp, he was determined to escape from North Korea, which he finally did it successfully. Bayok never found his father. In 2004, he went back to China and held a memorial service for him by the river. Number 4. Jongmin Wu Jong Min Wu was a soldier in the Korean People's Army. He left North Korea for one reason, to make money. Unlike other defectors who had to risk their lives while escaping, Joung's story was different. He basically informed the guards at the border that he was leaving. This worked since they were all military men and he left with no fights. Joung left North Korea while on duty, dressed in his military uniform. When he got to Thailand, he borrowed clothes from friends he had there and kept his uniform safely in his bag just in case he was to go back to North Korea. He said military uniforms and ID cards are valuable assets in North Korea. The military can do almost anything without being questioned. While in North Korea, Joang wore his uniform every day, even when he was off duty. He did this just to retain the sense of respect awarded to military officers by civilians. Otherwise, someone might steal a cigarette from him or try to pick a fight. When he arrived in South Korea, intelligence confiscated his uniform. However, he persuaded his North Korean military contacts to send him a new one. He wears them when he appears on Now On My Way To Meet You, a talk show where people from North Korea share their experiences. Number 3. Yonmi Park Park is described as being one of the most famous North Korean defectors in the world. She fled North Korea to China in 2007 at the age of 13 before moving to South Korea and then to the United States. Park left North Korea in 2007. According to Park's account, after her father bribed his way out of jail, the family began to plan their escape to China. But Park's older sister, Eunmi, left for China early without notifying them. The family feared that they would be punished for Yunmi's escape. So Yeonmi and her mother left North Korea by traveling through China with the help of brokers who smuggle North Koreans into China. They escaped by crossing the border into Changbai on the night of 30th March 2007. Park and her mother found a Christian shelter headed by Chinese and South Korean missionaries in Qingdao. Due to the city's large ethnic Korean population, they were able to evade the attention of authorities. With the help of the missionaries, they later fled to South Korea through Mongolia. Park has given three separate and vastly different accounts of her father and the family's defection from North Korea.
claiming that her father chose to stay behind in North Korea, believing that his illness would slow them down, claiming that she defected alongside him and buried his corpse after he died from an illness during their defection, while also claiming to have left him behind in North Korea, having never told him the family planned to defect. The authenticity of Park's claims about life in North Korea has contradicted her earlier stories and those of both her mother and fellow defectors from North Korea and have been the subject of widespread skepticism. Political commentators, journalists, and professors of Korean studies have criticized Park's accounts of life in North Korea for having various inconsistencies, contradictory claims, and exaggerations. Number 2. Kim Woo-ju Kim's story is different from the other defectors. Unlike his fellow defectors who left North Korea for good, Kim defected back to North Korea after approximately two years of stay in South Korea. In November 2020, the former gymnast approached the border separating the two Koreas, then scaled a tall barbed wire fence and walked the 2.5 miles across the heavily armed demilitarized zone, DMZ, dodging landmines but not security cameras, which captured his escape not fewer than five times. He told South Korean officials he had defected to escape an abusive stepfather. He later changed his name to Kim Woo Jong, and he reportedly found work as an office cleaner. But just over a year later, in January 2022, he appears to have made the same dangerous journey in reverse. This has prompted speculation he might have been a spy, something denied by government officials. Number 1. Ji Seong Ho, a disabled man escaping North Korea on crutches. As you have seen from the other stories, escaping North Korea takes a lot of effort and risk. But imagine if the person escaping is disabled. Honestly, it seems impossible, but Ji managed to escape North Korea on his crutches. Ji was born in 1982 and grew up during the North Korean famine of the mid-1990s. In 1995, his grandmother died of starvation. The devastating famine caused Ji and his siblings to eat grass and even rats to overcome hunger. These kind of foods were unhealthy and unreliable, therefore Ji went to look for more ways to get actual food and something better for the family to eat. For this reason, he opted to steal coal from trains and try to exchange it in the markets for food, an event he will never forget. In March of 1996, while on a train stealing coal with his mother and sister, Ji lost consciousness from hunger while jumping from one train car to another and fell through a gap between the cars. As a result of the accident, he became disabled. This event made life harder for Ji and his family, but he didn't give up on his cause of finding a better life. Ji's mother and sister defected from North Korea in 2004. In 2006, Ji and his brother escaped from the north, crossing the Tumen River into China and then to South Korea. Ji nearly drowned in the river. After the crossing, Ji insisted that his brother leave him behind, lest his disability result in capture for both of them. With the aid of religious groups and others, Ji managed to make his way across China. He was later reunited with his brother in South Korea. Ji's father tried to cross into China the same way, but was caught and murdered. Ji is now a member of the National Assembly of the Republic of Korea, and he also helps North Koreans who are still in the North, as well as those who have escaped to the South. Despite the risks and challenges, these individuals choose hope over fear, and freedom over oppression. The journeys inspire us all to never take our liberty and freedom for granted. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.